Now I've got to tell a little story, but it's a story that hit me pretty hard yesterday. So yesterday, where was I? Oh, that's right. Yesterday, I, uh, I went shooting. See, I have a little leftover bullet here from the range. So I went shooting, I went to an outdoor range in a mining quarry, and I had this small uh, group uh, lesson, and uh, we go out to a mining quarry, it's really cool. And uh, the weather was amazing, it's out here in California. And I was with these two dudes, uh, they, they almost looked like they could have both been cops, but I think one was like a surgeon and, and the other was uh, uh, like a massive like nationwide uh, contractor, like an electrical contractor. So it was really, really cool. Uh, these guys, they were so nice and, and they were really insightful. But I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time while I was there relatively quiet because it was me, them two, and, and the instructor, uh, the instructors, we'll say. And uh, what was really eye-opening to me and, and it was almost like chilling, like bone chilling to me. It was, it was really scary. Uh, it was probably honestly one of the saddest things I've heard in my life or, or maybe even like, dare I say, the scariest thing in my life. So we get in the Sprinter van and what is this, a nine mil? This is a 40 hollow right here. Um, anyway. All right. So saddest thing. So uh, I'm, I, I get in the van. And the entire ride of them, who are probably like 65, both of them are like, yeah, so-and-so just passed away from cancer. And the other one's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then, you know, then he's like, my wife just had a stroke and, you know, she's recovering. And then the other guy's like, I just got over prostate cancer. And, and uh, oh, my wife, you know, she's, she's going through chemo. She thought she was going to be done. She's on round 11 out of 15 of chemos, lost like 20 pounds. And, and she's like, I'm, I'm almost through. I've, oh, I've almost made it. And now the doctor's like, we're going to have to keep going. And, and these people, they're like, you know, the, the, the wife and the husband, one of them, they're, they're surgeons. And, uh, you know, one of the things they said hit me so hard. They're like, did you think we would work for 40 years just to have our retirement be spent like this. And what they're saying was, did you think we would go to basically med school for 12 years and then be surgeons for 10 years and, and work their ass off, you know, basically for a combined 40 years to finally have the freedom of retirement only to be dealing with the hell of, of basically age and ailments and, and uh, uh, whether it's a lack of energy or cancer recoveries or the inability to travel because of treatments or, or f friends and family dying or all this like craziness. And I'm just like, this is like literally the saddest place I could be right now. But it was actually probably the best place to be because I'm 31 and it hit me really hard because I'm like, damn, you know, that that goes to show that like, you should do whatever you can and not say no to experiences in your life when you can have the experiences. You know, I think so many of us, especially in the financial community, uh, we, we get so like tight sometimes with money. It's like, no, 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 no. I, I don't wanna spend money on that. I wanna save because I want my investments to grow. But really what you're doing when you're constantly saving for retirement is you're borrowing from today to give to an uncertain future. And that's really scary. That's really scary. And it's real life, you know, but it's, it's scary. And, and so my thinking, you know, the wake up call to me has been, and, and I've, I've felt this way probably more for like the last year, uh, maybe since I turned 30, uh, is, is this idea of like, hey, you got to make sure that you take advantage of all the experiences that you can because the future is uncertain and you want to get in whatever you can now. If you have the energy to have fun and, and uh, you know, work hard but play hard, do it. And I think that's something that I've always really lived by is the idea of it's okay to work hard. Like I'm not saying don't grind. I'm not saying don't invest. I'm not saying don't, you know, work overtime. I'm okay with that. Like I work a lot. Uh, I probably, I, you know, I, I would guess I, I work somewhere around 100 hours a week and just like it's always work. And maybe there's 15 hours on a regular week for family, right? That's like a couple hours a day. It's not a lot. It's mostly just work, 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 work. 
And that's because I've got three different jobs. Uh, you know, it's running an ETF, the financial advising side, the the real estate startup, YouTube and social media, and, and coordinating teams around that. It's, it's a lot of work. But I'm also willing to make sure that when I travel with family, we have a blast. I mean, I have to say, I just went to, uh, what was it? Um, Deer Valley, I actually briefly went skiing with Ross, but I had a blast skiing with my five-year-old, my seven-year-old, my wife, and we had a great time. You know, you're going in the pool and the spa when it's like freezing outside, but but you know, it's all just fogged up because uh, uh, because they keep the, the water temperature so hot. Uh, so everything looks like it's steaming, it's just water vapor, it's not actually steam. But anyway, it's, uh, you know, those are the sort of experiences that, that you wanna share with the people around you that you love and care about and friends and family. And so I think it's really good, even though we're always talking about finance, to remember like not everything in your life has to be you taking the back seat uh, to, to really good experiences because you're trying to save a few extra bucks. Like personally, I cringe when people are like, oh no, I don't want to spend money on like a Starbucks. I just, it makes me want to vomit. I'm like, really? You think so little of yourself that you can't work a little harder to make that up? Or like, really, you're going to go to to, I don't know, Disney World, and you're not gonna pay for the, the, the fast tickets or whatever they call them. Uh, like, really, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna spend your time in, in the line if, if you have the ability to afford it? Like, what are you doing? Your time is so valuable. And I think that, that experience of when I went shooting with the folks, it really made me realize like, wow, you know, you gotta double down on making sure you're taking those moments and those experiences because you don't know how long you're gonna be able to anymore. I mean, we when we did uh, like running shooting drills, one of the guys, he couldn't do them. And he's like, I, I'm gonna sit out the, the running shooting drills. And I'm like, what the hell? I, I didn't say that obviously, but I'm just thinking to myself like, I don't wanna be 65 and then be like, oh, I gotta sit out the running shooting drills because I can't run. And I'm like, that sucks, uh, you know, like, I don't know, I, 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 it's, it was, um, it, it, I don't know, it hit me pretty hard. It was just this uh, pretty wild uh, sort of wake up call. Like, I think that line was so impactful uh, about not only them talking about all these people dying, which is obviously terrible, and all these people having these ailments, but also just the, the line of, did you imagine we'd work our whole lives just to spend our retirement like this? And it's like, ah, because what do you have in retirement? A number, right? You have a number, a number and yourself. That's what you have when you retire, yourself and a number. And like, you have to be able to do something with that number, whether it's $5 million, a $1 million, 10 million, 100 million, you have to be able to function and do something. If you can, it's like, what was the point? So, uh, so have some fun as you go through the journey. My father-in-law always calls it the journey. Like, you, you, you don't want to, you don't want to be the person and I'm guilty of this too, where like you get in the car to go on a road trip and you're so focused on like getting there that you're missing the fun of like stopping at that funky gas station in the middle of nowhere. Like the, the entertainment that happens along the way, because you're so anxious to get to the destination. The problem is if you're so anxious to get to the destination, well, the destination Let's put it this way, the destination life ain't that great. Like where you're going is like game over, right? But don't I have a sound clip of this here? Game over. Yeah, like that's the destination. So so you gotta enjoy the ups and downs, you know, the game these the lead. and these lost the lead. And you know, a little bit of manipulation along the way. <laughs> Check out the programs on building wealth link down below. I have to do that right after, you know, it's a Age of Empires. Anyway, that was pretty impactful to me. And and then, you know, then there's just like unfairness that happens. I mean, then you see people that, you know, it's terrible, but there are people who are in there. I know somebody right now, actually a good friend of mine, his wife's got cancer and she's like 24. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, that's not even fair. That's just, that's just wrong. You know, and then like three kids. It's just, it's just, it's so sad. It's so terrible. So, um, but, you know, so anyway, I don't know. Um, hopefully, you could you can enjoy uh, life out there as as much as you can. Um, you know, go go have fun. Don't don't take yourself too seriously. I think probably the biggest lesson that I've always learned is, um, you know, probably the biggest lesson I would say is life is all about two steps forward, one step back. But you kind of have to look at those one step backs as just part of the game. 
Like, I think sometimes we get so frustrated, like, ah, it feels like I'm always getting set back. It's like, that's part of the game, man. Like, you got to play the game and, and enjoy that. Uh, so somebody here says, one should stop drinking alcohol if they want to have a productive last 20 years. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I pretty much am totally off alcohol. Uh, which is, I've actually inspired my dad as well to stop drinking alcohol. He's, how old is he now? 40, 40, he's coming up on 71. Uh, that's probably pretty good. Somebody here writes, Doge from the future. If you appreciate these morning meetings, send a couple bucks. Oh, well, thank you. appreciate that. That's really nice of you to say. In the old days, the husband was the hunter for food, but in modern times, the husband is the hunter for our family. The hunter is for money. Uh, yeah, with Tammy saying that here. Uh, I think that's where uh, the talk about priorities, but Kevin, we need to, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going anywhere. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying don't work, right? I want to be very clear about that. I'm not saying don't work. Uh, I'm just saying, like, work hard, but then also have fun. Uh, like, go go do something. Like, let me put it this way, okay? So, so last year, okay, I'll give you a little bit more background here. This is, I think this might be interesting. So in, in 2021, I was thinking about creating a stock brokerage. It was going to be a combination between uh, probably M1 Finance and Webull, something like in the middle. And we were going to do like automatic wheeling of options and, and, and some really cool things. The problem is when we were in discussions with both FINRA and Apex, as well as some other institutions and, and uh, market makers, we're realizing there's no money to be made in the stock brokerage business. I don't like starting businesses that can't make any money. Like yesterday, I was thinking about, I was researching, you know, credit cards backed by home equity. And I found a company that I, I won't reveal, but I basically think is a fraud. And I think they're a fraud because they have so little demand. I don't think there's money to be made in that because I don't think homeowners care about credit cards secured to their home equity. I think they're like, hell no, my home equity is sacred, like F off. So, so if there's no money to be made in something, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, for example, on this idea of starting a stock brokerage, we, uh, after my campaign for governor in 21, we, we were in that idea for about two and a half months and we killed the idea because A, we saw an inflection, a massive inflection in the market. That's back when I shorted ARK K at like a hundred bucks. And we saw a massive inflection in the market. It, it, we figured it would be near impossible to get people to sign up for a brokerage in a bad market. So we killed that idea. Like a month later, lo and behold, Sam Bankman Freed's on CNBC getting interviewed by Becky Quick talking about how he wants to create a stock brokerage. Now in hindsight, we're like, of course that fraud wanted to find more ways to attract capital. But Becky Quick, she's like, hey, well, how are you gonna make money in a stock brokerage? And he's like, oh, we're not. It's a lost leader. And it's like, well, good thing we didn't go down that road. I mean, we figured that out ourselves, right? Uh, but I don't want to do businesses that don't make money. So in 2022, instead, uh, I, I launched businesses that I think have, have very real potential in the long term to make a, a great deal of money. I mean, no guarantees, but I mean, think about what I did in 2022. I launched an ETF, which I think is a phenomenal uh, financial product. And uh, you can learn more about it at meetkevin.com. Uh, I launched a real estate startup, which I think is going to make a lot of money. And I didn't do that because I wanted to work less, right? I did it because I got to ring the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. I get to do a startup. I get to employ a lot of people and share the visions that I have for, for both stocks and real estate with millions of people. Like that's exciting to me. But that excitement also helps me unlock excitement just in, in regular life, whether it's, it's you know, going paintballing with the team or, or whatever, like actually, again, work hard, play hard. Uh, obviously, I also, I bought a plane in 2022, which uh, was really phenomenal because it's basically free for the first year, which is amazing, uh, thanks to the tax benefits. But, uh, you know, a lot of people look at that, they're like, oh, you're just trying to finance the lifestyle. If you look, it's like, if anything, that, that thing has made me work a lot harder. Uh, because I, I travel for work so much. But the beauty about it is it really has enabled me to be very, very quick. I could get a lot done very quickly. Uh, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example here. We did some math. Uh, so 
I'll, I'll give you some PJ math, okay? Now, some people are like, oh, Kevin, you're just trying to justify the jack. I don't have to justify jack shit to anybody. Like, uh, plane is mine. I don't have to justify anything to anyone. Uh, but we did, did some uh, quick math, which I think would be very interesting to people. So, where did I write it down? Uh, 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 I, I, I have it written down on one of these notepads. I'm going to find it. But basically, uh, what we did is uh, as a as sort of a... Did anybody watch the original Apprentice where you kind of get assigned a task and then you have to compete against other people to see how they do? Well, I just did that with, uh, with, with four employees because... So I've probably traveled, I think we're at somewhere around 100 flights already for the year. 98 of them are probably work uh, related, maybe two aren't. But anyway, so out of 98 flights for the year, I've gotten to a lot of places and I've taught a lot about real estate and what we're looking for and what we're doing. And so what I did in sort of an apprentice style, do I charter my plane? Hell no. <laughs> no, dude, that's my PP. Don't, I don't want anybody on my PP. Uh, anyway. So what I did was this apprentice style challenge where I challenged four employees to travel commercially to two different cities each and then report back to me. And uh, so uh, we went to basically we covered eight different cities. Two people went to or, or one person went to two cities times four. Right. That's that's basically eight people. And, uh, and they had seven days to learn everything they can, meet agents, and basically do what I do and implement what I do in person and learn everything they can. And it's really different when you're just watching Kevin doing something to basically getting thrown in the fire pit and having, doing it, having to do it yourself. You actually learn a lot, right? That's the point. But what I thought was really interesting is I compared how long it would take and how much it would cost to send one person to two cities four times over a seven day period and how fast could we do it if I loaded everybody into my plane and basically I drove the bus, I don't fly, but I, we basically, we, we did it with me, my, the Kevin version. And so here were the results, which was really interesting. So the results were that uh, it took seven days to have eight different cities visited. Uh, that means it took uh, multiple, it took one day of traveling on each, uh, for each travel day was a full travel day. I mean, like getting to the airport, being early, Ubering to the airport, checking in, TSA, waiting, then being bound by the flight time, then getting to the, the location, checking into the hotel, all of that, right? It was a seven day process. Because when you compare that to what I can do with, with our plane, it's, it's about 60% faster. I'll give you the example in just a moment. But we added everything up, and I think the total cost was about $8,000, maybe $8,500, right, right around there, uh, was the total cost. And what we got basically was one person saw two cities, and so it worked out to roughly about $2,000 a person for seven days, which is actually pretty good. I mean, some of them were, were using scooters to get around because the goal was how inexpensively can you do it? That was the goal. Uh, I mean, we're talking, you know, $125 hotels, keeping it as cheap as possible. That's part of the challenge. It's like how, it, how efficient can you be? But some of the plane tickets are like 700 bucks to go from California to, to Texas right now. It's like 700 bucks. It's insane. So anyway, the, what we did is we said, all right, Four people saw eight cities for eight grand. That works out to $1,000 per person per city, right? The problem is uh, one person only experienced two cities, right? So if one person wanted to see all of those cities, the cost would have been a lot more. Not so great. I mean, yeah, you could do double occupancy in some of the rooms, but still you'd be traveling. So then what we realized is, well, what if we took my plane. And so we looked at the variable costs of the plane. And if we took my plane, we could stop in two to three cities a day. And the reason we can do that is because we could take off and land whenever the hell we want. So we could take off at 6 a.m., land somewhere at 9, have a rental car there, check out the city, properties, meet agents, on the plane, next city, on the plane, next city. And we could probably do that entire seven-day itinerary in three days, instead of six nights in two nights, 
instead of multiple Ubers, a couple, you know, a few rentals at the various different places we would go. And so what we figured is the variable costs for the plane and Ubers and the, the fewer hotels and fewer dinners and stuff, we would be able to do the entire seven day trip in three days with two nights only. It would cost us about $17,000, so a little more than twice. So it is more expensive. Initially, it looks more expensive, but watch this. A little bit more expensive. So let me write this down because I think it'd be easier to visualize. I also think it's very interesting. So you write it down. So what did $8,000 get you? Well, $8,000 got you one person seeing two cities, 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 right? And that took seven days. That's what about $8,000 got you. Well, in three days, so in substantially less time, it might cost $18,000, but what happened? Now all of a sudden you could have, I would be along, right? So you could actually have five people seeing eight cities. So now all of a sudden, if you figure five people are seeing eight cities, take a look at this, 18,000 divided by eight <clears throat> actually works out to $2,200, oops, let me do this, $2,250 per city divided by five, it would only cost $450 per city for five people to see all of these cities. $450 per city. Whereas over here, people spent $1,000 per city. Now, how much of a mind F is that? That I think is pretty remarkable. Now, this doesn't work if only like one person is traveling, right? And it's also worth noting that I pay for the plane myself because it's my plane. I pay for it uh, and I don't, I don't bill my real estate startup for my jet. Uh, I pay for it. Uh, and I'm going to do that as long as possible. So what's beautiful about this though, is I realize I go, my gosh, we are more than twice as efficient, uh, in terms of how fast we could actually see real estate. We're more than twice as efficient with this plane. But on top of that, more people are able to get to the places and we're actually able to do them for a cheaper per city cost because you can load the plane up with like nine people. Imagine if there were nine people instead of five. So it's really incredible, uh, just the efficiency that you can get out of this. So I'm, these are the, the risks that I've taken in, in 2022. And yeah, I mean, there, there are cool things that come out of it. You know, it's obviously fun uh, to, to do it that way because it's so much more effective. But these are just the risks that, I'm, uh, that I like taking because A, I think they're good business risks, but they also combine with the idea of like life. Like, Dude, if I want to see four cities, do I want to be away from my family for seven days? Hell no. And quite frankly, in seven days, the, the people who traveled only saw two cities. So if I wanted to see eight cities commercial, I'd probably be gone for a month when I could literally see eight cities in three days, <laughs> right? Uh, it's kind of remarkable. So, so tying that all back to like life, it, to me, uh, I think I'm making the best possible business decisions while at the same time looking at life and being like, Shisa, you know, you, you don't want to, you, you want to, you want to do what you can to be as efficient as possible. So you could not only run the businesses you want to create the success that you're trying to create, but you also want to do it in a way where you're not miserable doing what you're doing. I don't think there, it would be possible to do my real estate startup without a plane because we, we have to be places fast. We can't be beholden to a, a schedule of, uh, of, of commercial air traffic and we can land pretty much wherever we want with this sucker, uh, which is great. We could get into small airports. We only need a 4,000 foot runway. That saves a lot of time. So it's, it's really exciting. Any, anyway, so, so that's some insight. I wanna look at uh, some, uh, uh, some of these, uh, some of the comments that y'all have. Um, nobody rides my jet. Nobody gets charged to ride my jet. That doesn't exist. Uh, actually, I think we just, uh, one of us just visited Minneapolis. Uh, so let's see here. Kevin airlines. No, God, no, 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 no. Time does not equal money. Everybody has time, but not everybody has money. Well, I mean, I think that depends on the situation that you're in, right? Like personally, 
uh, I, when I when I was broke and I you know went to um, uh, Jamba Juice or I was working at Jamba Juice, I would go to all the grocery stores with a coupon, right? Like today, I'd probably just use Walmart delivery because Walmart Plus it's like free delivery. It's like why why would you waste your time doing that? I don't know why people keep asking about charters. Uh, I don't do charters. Love the house hack videos. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Arm and a leg just, it, it travel's annoying, man. It's it's really difficult. My, ha 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 ha, your uh, relative lived in a development with a runway in his backyard. Now that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you could, you could put a plane back there. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, a plane absolutely increases productivity. Massive increase of productivity. It's insane. Well, because the other thing too is when you're, when you're on an airline, uh, and I've been on airlines plenty, okay? So it, it's like, it is what it is. But when you're on an airline, after you fly, you're tired. You're exhausted. Like your productivity is like zero that day. Whereas uh, my little baby plane, I almost, I feel like energized when I get off of it because I get so much done on it because everything's where I want it. Like I keep an iPad and a laptop on there. Uh, uh, you know, the pilots bring me my newspapers. It's like, I, yeah, I still read the newspapers. Um, it's phenomenal. Just the productivity of being able to do what you want. And, and sometimes, I mean, it doesn't happen often, but we can in theory be midair and we're like, yeah, let's go to a different airport. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. Uh, you don't actually wrap planes, you paint planes. Yes, we have two dedicated pilots that are on salary. How much is maintenance? You know, if you want to know how much maintenance is on a plane, you should not think about owning a plane. It's insane. Let's just put it this way. The plane's probably going to cost somewhere around $2.4 million a year to own and operate. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, we are going to paint on a new tail number onto it, which will be pretty, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Just make a teleporter. I know, right? Anyway, so I wanted to share that, uh, you know, that's, uh, do I regret not having a wedding experience? No, I actually don't because see, I think a big wedding experience would have probably tanked our ability to buy real estate. And the most important thing you should do when you're younger is buy real estate. Uh, now don't get me wrong. That is counter to what I'm saying here. Like this experience versus like, um, uh, like real estate, right? But I also had an experience. You know what I did? Instead of spending 40 or 50 grand on a wedding, which gets you, you know, one or two nights, we did a 10 day honeymoon uh, and, a, and a Mediterranean cruise for like five grand. So in other words, instead of spending 50 grand on a wedding or 40 grand on a wedding where, where everything is overpriced, the photographers, the videographers, the wedding cakes, the venue, everything is a rip off in the wedding industry. And I'm sorry, if you work in the wedding industry, honestly, you know deep down inside, it's a rip off. But that's okay, like people are willing to pay it. So I don't blame you for charging the prices other people are willing to pay it. Make your money, man, it's fine. It's okay for you to make money. I'm not gonna do that though. Instead, I'm like, I'm gonna have a bitchin' vacation for, you know, five grand or 10 grand, maybe all in, right? I'm gonna have a bitchin' 10 day vacation and it's gonna be the best thing ever. But I'm gonna spend zero on the wedding and I'm gonna spend 10 grand on my honeymoon because why do I wanna entertain everybody else when instead I'm gonna have a bitchin' vacation and a bitchin' experience with now my wife and buy a house. <laughs> So, so sorry. <laughs> okay. Don't ask me about weddings, man. <laughs> anyway, I got to get over to the Elite Hustlers live stream. So I appreciate y'all being here. Y'all are great. Uh, I know there's some haters who watch, but you know what? The haters are watching, which is honestly an honor. It's okay, man. You know, it, it, it's life. You know, some people want to punch me in the face. That's fine. You know what? Even the people who hate, you can still go to StreamYard. Go to metkevin.com slash streamyard. Sign up for one of the best streaming platforms ever. You put cool things up on screen, like this is a paid promotion, sponsorship. But hey, StreamYard rocks. Check them out.